Coming up, I finally get the Finn Bear. I'm going to show you what I got my brother for his birthday this year. And then, is it a knife or is it a short sword? I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, one of my favorite comments from this past week was from No Good Lion Snake. Uh, this was on my how, how do I carry a fixed blade knife on me? And he says, I just carry a Phillips screwdriver. And when people jack me, I bone check them a good 10 times before I flee the scene. But I live in Detroit. And uh, no, no good lion snake that resonates with me. I was born in Dearborn, Michigan back in the 70s. Uh, I know it was composed differently, but I'm not so sure how much nicer it was. Uh, Detroit, I know it's uh, it's in a rough patch, but uh, let's let's pray Detroit returns to its former greatness, like all of our other major awesome cities. All right, next up was from Libra Moon. Lots of Libras in my life, Libra Moon, 9968. This was on my Cold Steel El Hombre video. And he says, 1999, that's when I got this knife here, Matrix. Harry Potter, Star Wars, In Sync, Britney Spears, Real World MTV. The world's going to end those days. Yeah, that's right. Those days. I remember Y2K and feeling very concerned. Everyone was so concerned that their computers were going to go back to zero and the world would end. And uh, it didn't. And I just think it's crazy that all the big minds didn't just know that that wasn't going to happen. But anyway, that was 1999. Um, sometimes when things are going really well, we make problems for ourselves. I know I do that for myself, have in my life. And uh, I think we as Americans do that sometimes because we have it so good. All right. Uh, coming up, uh, we're going to get to uh, the pocket check. But I want to say uh, before then, thank you for commenting, for watching, of course, and for leaving a thumbs up or a like uh, or a comment. I appreciate it. It, it keeps things moving. And uh, well, lets me know people are watching what I'm doing. All right. That said, Let's get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my front right pocket, I had the Kaiser Mystic. I've been carrying this one again. This was my favorite knife of 2023, my favorite folder. And I've been carrying it a lot recently. I think it's because, I think this all started because there's been a lot of barbecues. There have been a lot of barbecues that we've been going to or cookouts, depending on where you live. Uh, and I wanted to get that Rex 45 blade into action because hot meat is the best way, <clears throat> excuse me, to get a patina on certain steels. Now, I don't know much about Rex 45, except that it's a really uh, excellent, uh, uh, what am I, the edge retention on this is awesome. It's a semi stainless, or actually it's not stainless at all, but it's not, it doesn't uh, seem to, um, it doesn't seem prone to corrosion the way like 1095 is or something like that. Seems a little more stout hearted, but you can get a really nice uh, patina on this. Uh, I try to force patina uh, when I first got the knife. I didn't like it. I polished it off and just decided to go the natural route. So, yeah, I've been carrying this one a lot. I, I adore this knife uh, very much. Uh, lives up to its sort of maritime inspiration. It looks like a piece of whaling kit. And that's what he was thinking of uh, Paul Munko when he designed this. He was thinking of his hometown of uh, Mystic, Connecticut, which uh, back in the day was a uh, bastion of the whaling industry. And a lot of people forget our whole entire everything ran on whale oil for a while there. So uh, thanks to the whales and also thanks to Paul Munko for designing that really cool knife. Uh, also, nice and light for the shorts. I forgot about that. I usually look at a knife like this and assume it's going to be heavier, but uh, then I pick it up and I'm like, oh yeah, this is great for shorts and light, uh, what do you call it? Uh, light clothing and, you know, uh, hot weather clothing. Sorry. I could just move on now. Uh, speaking of a piece of kit uh, that reminds me of an artifact or an antique, this is the new Venom Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. And it's the finish and the combination of the finish, those dark wash bolsters and blade next to this dark matter um, red carbon fiber. I just I love it. I love the way it looks. And of course, it is an excellent knife because it's a Jack Wolf 
knife, and it's very, very well made, uh, very thin behind the edge and slicey, making it uh, a very useful little knife. Three inch blade, basically. Uh, I think it's just a hair under and um, a, a really full hand grip. It's just an awesome blade. I love this knife. Um, I loved its first iteration with the uh, full height. Um, well, this has a full height hollow grind ground blade also but the other one has the uh grinder satin i love that one something about this just sings to me i just think it's a beautiful beautiful knife and one of my favorite designs from him um ben belkin because i love the useful uh practicality of this kind of handle a the uh, trapper style handle just with that gentle downward curve and the widening at the pommel very very useful and uh comfortable in hand Next on me, this is another one I've sort of pulled out of the archives, been carrying a bit this summer, uh, since I've decided a, a new way to carry it. This is the JB Knife and Tool Ditch Pick. Really nice double-edged pick call with a with a 1 16th inch thin blade, very thin blade, 1095 blade steel, very flexible uh, if you were to put it to that. I don't, uh, but I've seen uh, Brian of JB Knife and Tool uh, flex these. These uh, ditch knives, ditch when you're buying a JB knife and tool, if it has ditch before it, the prefix ditch, that means it's extra thin and uh, it's going to go in real easy. Uh, this I opted for double edge. I think when this run came out, this was the first time he offered a double edge. He also offered a very cool bayonet grind where it's just half on the front, but had to go full, full edge. Uh, this one I uh, used to carry in the waistband. And it was a little uncomfortable with the handle, but uh, I have found that with this in the waistband clip going all the way around the sheath and just mounted uh, on my very front next to my belt buckle, this works great. And it's a small enough knife. It doesn't print. It blends right in. Again, a nice light summer carry uh, EDC. If this is a little too aggressive for you, uh, there are a number of models from JB Knife and Tool that will still get the job done of defending you if, if need be, heaven forbid. Uh, but they're a little more practical in terms of single edge and maybe the blade shape. Blade shapes are a little less uh, aggressive. Okay, lastly, Speaking of aggressive, my gosh, this knife I love. And actually, I want to develop, well, I'll tell you in a sec. Uh, this one is the Tylite 6, uh, a knife I waited way too long to buy. I guess I'd say about 30 years too long. I uh, really love this. Uh, this is new old stock from Willie Knives. Willie Knives, uh, their, their interview is on the Knife Junkie podcast uh, this, this week that this episode is dropping. Uh, but the uh, long and short of it is Delaware Knife Shop uh, based around a father who made knives. And I happened upon their shop with my family on the way back from Rehoboth Beach and bought this knife there. It was my birthday. So this is my birthday knife of 2024. And I had seen Tomas go after a, 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 a ballistics dummy with this. And it really inspired me to get this. I had the six inch. It used to be my EDC years and years ago when i lived in new york and actually that knife ended up on the subway track and i i uh by hook or by crook it was by hook actually got it off the uh track but anyway i love this knife and i think that its best expression uh this design is in this full six inch bladed version so i had this on me for emotional support it was my esk today and uh i gotta say uh it it carries nicely i, I can only carry this as a third knife or well in this case a fourth knife if i'm wearing a certain pair of pants and it's a 511 pant that has a, sort of a hidden cargo pocket on the side uh, it doesn't look like cargo pants they don't look like cargo pants but they are and this fits nicely on an internal pocket within that hidden pocket okay i want to show you i i want to start developing a system just my own, you know, some drills uh, with a knuckle duster and this knife because, uh, and the reason I first picked these up together is they seem to go together. They're sort of West Side Story, uh, but uh, modernized and and uh, they go together. They really do go together. So I'm going to figure out some, uh, just put together some little Kali drills, but have the weapons be this and this instead of two sticks or two knives or a knife and a stick and that kind of thing. So uh, I think it'll be very easy to adapt to this. Lots of hammer fists, I see. And um, <clears throat> and then uh, the coup de grace shots with this awesome knife. So this will be something I do in the morning um, when I'm putting off 
lifting weights or something like that kettlebells all right that's what i had on me today what did you have on you let me know uh by the way this handle this grip on this jb knife and tool is awesome uh he still makes these i highly recommend you uh follow them on instagram and um, even have some jute wrapped models every now and again which i do not have but would like to all right uh i want to talk about the pre-order open for one more week here on this knife the nova 2 the beautiful uh, collaboration knife between me and um, Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives, a uh, Kiridashi on his EDC Tonto frame. This is the second in the line. The first was a recurved Bowie. You remember the Nova one with the maroon handle. Well, this one has the ivory handle coming back to the main camera over here. Oh, wait. Yeah, let me leave that here. That looks nice. Uh, that dark wash blade, do, uh, deeply hollow ground, 154 cm. These are all handmade in Massachusetts. Uh, we're going to do special serial numbers, so custom serial numbers. Uh, the lot number will be what the lot number is, but your number out of that lot number is your choice. All right. And then it will come with an awesome sheath just like this, except we're changing the sheath color to a charcoal gray charcoal gray uh these should be coming in uh, uh december uh i believe december is the date he put on this depending on how many we end up with it might be sooner than that all right go check out store.thenifejunkie.com for this beautiful ivory and red handled modern day kiridashi uh great for self-defense super awesome for utility this is very sharp the tip of this knife can uh, it basically handles everything i've ever used this for um just don't drop it on a concrete floor. I haven't done that. Uh, and I'm not saying that his knives aren't super strong, but that tip is does not want to be dropped face down. All right. And then lastly, before we get to Knife Life News, I want to give a shout out to Tom at Tactical Yama. Or I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Tactical Yama EDC. He sent me a couple. Uh, this one's still in the package. I have one on my bag. I gave one to my daughter. Uh, this is a patch what do they call these they call them um morale patches uh with a cool yama there with the sunglasses tom reached out to me and said you can i send you a couple of these patches i said yeah i love yamas uh you know with my wife's bolivian background yamas play heavily into the visual motifs and some of the things around here so uh yeah yama very cool they're interesting animals too just don't get spit spit on by one there. I think like camels, they spit. Uh, and I think like camels, their spit stains. Like if you get spit on by a yama, now correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, if you get spit on by a yama, uh, I think that area is going to be a different color for the rest of your life. So check that out. Thank you so much, Tom. I really appreciate these uh, morale patches. Check out Tactical Yama EDC. Okay. Well, that said, I want to get to Knife Life News, but I would like to say if you're interested in this show, you'd like to help support this show, you can do so on Patreon. You can also download the show to your favorite podcast app, so you don't have to sit here and look at my mug while I yammer on. You can just listen to me yammer on in your ears or in your car, wherever, when you're driving. When you get stopped by the cop, he's like, dude, you were going uh, 60 in a 45. What gives? You can say, I was listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. That cop will say, oh. I get it. I get it. You can't wait to get there. Uh, so go to the uh, QR code right here or the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Check out what we have to offer. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. The knifejunkie.com slash battle box. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Uh, knife Smith, Lon, Bladesmith, I should call him. Lon Humphrey has a new one out, the Minigun Custom. A couple things I like about this, just to get, yes, I'm, a, I'm an American male. I love miniguns. You know, the big rotating Gatling gun that, uh, that was used in Predator and is on basically mounted in some form on every U.S. aircraft. They're so cool. But anyway, this is a knife named after the minigun, and um, it's sort of a play on words because it's a small version or a companion piece to Lon Humphrey's very famous gunfighter Bowie, 
with the beautiful, long, slender, upswept uh, Bowie blade. One, I, I've never owned a Lon Humphrey, but um, I've I've been I've been eyeing them up for a long time. I love the the brute to forge look uh, of them. They're definitely beautifully forged knives. Uh, this one, 5.2 inches of 51, uh, 52, 100, uh, forged steel. Uh, and the scales, look at the scales on this, the beautiful scales. Uh, first of all, a lot Humphrey offers a lot of different handle materials, but on this particular model, what we're looking at here is called storm maple and it's stabilized maple from a tree that was downed in a storm on his 60 acre Ohio property. So everything about that, I love, uh, all the way down to Ohio. Um, and, uh, so just a beautiful looking knife, uh, a, a forged 52100 knife, uh, a Bowie, but also has that very special story to it. Um, look at this right here. I'm looking at it right now. It, it's got a, a just a really nice profile. That handle looks awesome. Um, <clears throat> I have to might have to check one of these out. I know that you can get them at uh, Knife Ship Free right now. So uh, go check that out there. Uh, these are 7.2 ounces with the sheath and available now. Beautiful knife, beautiful knife. Another fixed blade knife. This is on a different uh, side of cool, but also cool, is a Benchmade EDC called the, I don't even know how to pronounce this. I guess we'll find out as, as it gets more popular, but the Dacian, uh, D-A-C-I-A-N. How do you pronounce that? Dacian, Dacian, uh, Dacian. I, I'm going to go with Dacian. Uh, and it's their first real EDC fixed blade. Um, we've had small fixed blades from um, uh, from Benchmade before, more in their hunting line or their kitchen lines, but this is straight up EDC, and it is jimped as jimped as the day is long. You can see jimping all the way down the spine of the blade. There's also jimping around the pommel and around uh, in the inner part of the bird's beak. I, I gotta say, I appreciate that. I love the tactile feedback of jimping. It just feels good, and also sometimes is useful for uh, for grip. This Dacian, uh, dedicated EDC fixed blade knife, spear point blade, 3.54 inches of Magna Cut. Like that. I like that. Uh, oftentimes, Benchmade uh, would, would release new uh, blades in S30V. I like that they're doing it in Magna Cut. Um, very nice looking handle there. Brown and denim micarta. Looks like there's a little bit of uh, contouring, uh, maybe concave contouring in there. Uh, I can't tell, though. I love the pommel. Um, jimping, it, it really does. Um, what am I trying to say? It implies that you might need this for self-defense or you might need this for hard use. This is EDC. And you know that it's, uh, specifically that because the Kydex sheath has a pocket clip and not like a belt clip. But, uh, I think it acknowledges the fact that you might need to put it in reverse grip and come down hard on something. So uh, I do like that. Um, very nice looking knife. And I'm excited to see this one come out. Blue, uh, the blue jean denim micarta, I think, is a brand new thing for Benchmade. So that's also exciting. All right. Next up is from Buck. And this is a stealth release, a stealth run. I like that. That means they're just kind of dropping it uh, somewhat unannounced. But here I am talking about it and read it somewhere else. So I'm not sure what they mean by stealth run. Uh, but this is the Laren, the 501. This is the 501 is their Squire model. It's the 2.75 inch folding locking knife in the 110 series uh, under the 112 uh, Ranger. The the uh, 3.75 inch uh, 501 in Magna Cut is called the Laren after Laren Thomas of Knife Nerds. Someone I have to have back on this show. He's he's such a interesting dude and a nice guy to talk to and hang out with but uh, you can see that uh, from from this it comes with a leather slip that has the knife steel nerds logo on it which is pretty cool but the knife itself it's a single bolster uh, folding locking hunter style knife uh, again 2.75 inches of magna cut you've got a different sort of nail neck than on the ranger and on the buck 110 this looks like a just a machined groove as opposed to a, a nail neck. And uh, I like the way this thing looks with that Coca Bolo handle and no bolster. Now, it was already released in a uh, elk bone model that is way long sold out. I guess that was on the first run. This is the second run of the Laren. That's the 501 Squire with Magna Cut. Uh, but I really like the way this looks with the single bolster and that Coca Bolo. It's beautiful. 
<coughs> excuse me, definitely a gentleman's carry. And I've always kind of thought that super steels like Magna Cut or maybe maybe even more so things like S90V and uh, M390, like are difficult to sharpen super steels, uh, do belong on smaller gentlemen's knives or smaller EDC blades because uh, you're going to use them more than you will your larger knives. You just will. And it will require less sharpening and it being more difficult to sharpen them. That seems like the perfect place to put that. Well, uh, on a 501, which usually has the 420 uh, HC steel on it, this is a, uh, uh, a, a super upgrade with Magna Cut. Uh, only a thousand of these made. So if you're a, a buck guy, you better jump on it. All right. Lastly, I want to show you something. I didn't know that CJRB uh, sells prototypes. And this is another prototype that's for sale from them. This is called the Capstone. And it's got uh, an arrestingly unique Warncliffe blade. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. When I first saw it, I was like, Ugh, that's ugly. And then I suddenly liked it. I don't know. I... Uh, the, the, I love the drama of that giant fuller. So you have a, a large trapezoidal uh, opening um, hole on this large, broad, worn cliff with a slight belly. But you also have a very dramatic um, fuller running all the way to the front. And when the fuller gets to the front of the blade, it it presents as a large sort of notch. It has a, a cool sort of meat cleaver or um, a straight razor sort of feel to it. And I just I just like it. Uh, 3.4 inches of AR RPM 9 because it's CJRB, and that's their proprietary steel over at Artisan Cutlery. Uh, G10, it'll be a liner lock. It'll ha probably have uh, some variation in the handles uh, in terms of uh, uh, micarta and possibly wood, uh, four ounces. And this prototype is available now. Now, hopefully... People snatch this up and it becomes a production knife. I'm assuming that that's what they do with their prototypes that they sell. I can't imagine they would make a prototype, sell it out, and then not continue with it because that would make all that stuff extremely collectible. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at four new knives in the state of the collection. And then we're going to look at, uh, is it a knife or is it a short sword? Uh, but before we do, I just want to remind you about the uh, uh, that you can download everything to the podcast. You can download all of the shows to the podcast apps. But also, uh, we were talking about uh, the um, the store. The store does not only just sell uh, the Nova Two. The the store also sells T-shirts and all sorts of merch. Go over there, check it out. If you like sipping coffee out of a knife junkie uh, cup, that's where you do it. If you want a really cool, unique knife themed t-shirt designed by jim that's how you do it go to the knife slash store and check it out you can also do it at store.thenifejunkie.com all right coming up the state of the collection the shockwave tactical torch is your ultimate self-defense companion featuring a powerful led bulb that lasts 100,000 hours a super sharp crenulated bezel and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts don't settle for ordinary Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, the knifejunkie.com slash shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So you know that I love the cheap cold steels, the roach belly in particular. I've had a modified roach belly in my car for years. And then uh, just la a couple of weeks back, you saw that I was showing this one off. I got the Canadian belt knife in that line, $12 knife. Um, and then I was like, well, I have to, for completeness sake, I have to get the fin bear. So I got this fin bear, um, again, $12 on uh, Midway, not Midway, uh, Chicago Cutlery, Chicago Knife Works. I'm sorry, not Chicago Cutlery. And I got to say, I really like it. I haven't found a use for it yet. I got it wickedly sharp. It came sharp, but with a toothy edge. I just got it. I just ran it over some ceramic, got it razor sharp. And it's, again, one of these knives. It's it's a cheap, quote unquote, I'll say it, throwaway knife. It's not throwaway. You can use this your whole life. As a matter of fact, I knew a hobo type guy who carried uh, the roach belly, a knife in this series uh, for two years and survived, uh, you know, by his wits and his blade. And his blade was that. And I, you know. I wanted it to be something more glamorous, but it was that. And so I've always had faith in these 4116 um, 
inexpensive stamped cold steel knives. So I'm just happy to have this one uh, in my collection. I know it doesn't seem like a collectible knife, but to me it kind of is. So, uh, but it's the kind of knife that will also probably get modified and it it's going to be stationed somewhere. Uh, so this might end up on the back porch or this might end up um, in my wife's car or this might end up, you know, just somewhere um, in a survival kit or something. Um, so not necessarily something I want to see when I open my knife drawer to admire my cold steels, uh, but definitely something I want out there and in the mix uh, and ready to use, uh, like the um, like the roach belly has been for years, and it's always coming in. What do they say? Coming in clutch, uh, and so I dig it. I, I, if my my daughter in the future watches this, she's gonna cringe right there. Next up, I've been carrying this positively gorgeous new um, Dirk Pinkerton prototype. Now this is for his own line, Dirk Pinkerton Design knives and it is a worn cliff as you can see and i keep calling it 3.6 but we're gonna measure it right now here on our stage yeah i think 3.6 is pretty accurate <laughs> uh really beautiful s90v blade uh, uh saber flat grind with a fuller and titanium frame lock with that broad chamfering that Dirk Pinkerton is known for, at least that I always bring up. I love how he makes these real wide chamfers because it, he's not rounding it. He's not contouring it, um, but you get the feel of, of contouring, but with a more secure grip that you get from a flat surface. At least that's how I read it. I do love uh, contouring. Don't get me wrong. But something that's a little more flat like this feels more secure in the hand, like it's not going to roll uh, in a pinch. So as I mentioned, this is a prototype. He's got a couple of these out and about. I know Dave has one, OG Blade Reviews. And uh, I think it's a great knife. I've been carrying this. Mm, I usually don't carry things that are on loan. He said, carry it, kick the tires. I need, to, I need feedback. So I have uh, two notes of feedback that I'll be giving him and uh, for what that's worth. And I know one of the things he's already addressed. Uh, so I have one little bit, bit of feedback. Uh, this just feels great in hand. Uh, the jimping is perfect. The blade is so excellent. The blade is very, very sharp and acute, but you, and you have a very nice tip, but it doesn't feel dainty at all. It feels like a pretty hard use, pretty beefy knife, even though it's slender. I mean, this is, I've worn this in, uh, dress slacks and it's nice and light you know you've got relief uh, weight relief on the back of these scales um you've got flipping action you can get the the fuller to to release but it just needs to be a little bit sharper that's the note he already commented on uh really nice in reverse grip feels great in reverse grip it feels great in pickall reverse grip uh, heaven forbid you need that and uh just a great, great, great knife. I love this. And I'm hoping uh, that this goes into production. I think it will go into production. Um, I, I I know it's going to go into production. I just can't wait, I guess, until I get it. <laughs> and it's mine. I uh, wouldn't mind buying this prototype from, from Dirk either. What can I say? I'm, I'm generous like that. And look at that lock cutout. I love the curve on that lock cutout. So cool. A uh, great pocket clip. And... Um, a, a different sort of orientation in pocket. This works great in all sorts of pockets. Love this one. All right. Next up is a brother I got, brother I got from my knife. A knife I got from my brother. Um, his birthday is today as I record this. So I have to call him right after this. But I told him last night uh, via text, do not watch the show this week um, until you receive your package. Uh, so this is what I got him. Um, he's always getting me historical blades. And uh, I wanted to get him something he doesn't have in his collection, uh, a SOG, Mac V SOG by SOG. Um, the Mac V SOG Bowie is a, a classic design, very aggressive and um, famous. I happen to love this style of Bowie knife with that double peak here. Boom and boom. That was started on this knife, that super long swedge from here down to the tip and sog is known on their fixed blades for that shark what do they call it tiger shark tip 
Oh man, Doug or or one of you saw guys help me, but that little little faceting on the tip, a it makes the penetration a lot easier, and b uh, gives you actually a nice little snag on the on the back cut. If you were to use this in a Bowie knife fight and you're doing a back cut and all that, that little extra tiny bit of sharpened back would be devastating on a on a person's forearms. Uh, so this one is the uh, the Bowie. I have the Super Bowie, which has the bigger blade, but this is the classic. This is the one that you saw in Terminator 2, maybe for the first time. Like me, the first time I ever saw this. No, the first time I saw this knife was in Uncommon Valor, the movie Uncommon Valor, where a bunch of uh, uh, Vietnam vets go back to Vietnam to rescue some of their buddies who are still in POW camps. And one of the guys is teaching everyone how to take someone out by doing them in the back of the head and this is the knife he's he uses during that demo and he says something about scrambled eggs i can't remember exactly how that but uh, this was the first that was the first time i saw this knife and then in terminator 2 when um when sarah connor decides she's gonna go kill uh dyson uh to save the future and she's uh carving in the blade in the picnic table with this knife and then she's like, okay, I'm going to go kill him. And she stabs the knife and leaves, it leaves the knife right there. She's going on a mission and she leaves the knife and she has the sheath. It's like, come on, Sarah Connor. Well, I guess she had a lot on her mind, so I guess I'll for forgive her that. But uh, that was the second time I saw this knife. It left an impression, the shape of it stuck in the table. She had a, a leather fob, leather lanyard coming out of it. I was like, oh my God, that knife so cool so i love this i i really want to get this six inch version the original version the the bigger one is cool too uh, but this is the original so i had to get it from my brother um i i have noticed that uh the difference in sheath in 20 years uh, the one that i have is about 20 years old this leather is not as nice as uh, the original but what can you say uh the only reason i'm kind of kind of conscious about that is my brother knows leather so maybe maybe he'll do a different sheet i mean it is leather it's nice it's stout it'll do the job but it's not as supple as the leather on uh, the one i have from ages ago lastly and actually this will just we'll go into uh, is it a knife or is it a short sword because uh, the last knife in the state of the collection is the first knife in that category and this is a gift from a very generous friend, and that's Dave of OG Blade Reviews. He sent me this. Weapons Kukri. So uh, Traditional Filipino Weapons is a company out of the Philippines and Connecticut. Well, it's out of Connecticut and the... Uh, the Filipino Smiths down in um, down in the Philippines, obviously. Sorry, I'm I'm had an issue with the camera, so I'm I'm yammering a bit. Uh, so Ron Kazakowski uh, is a Filipino martial artist and JKD teacher in um, Connecticut. He started a company where he got all these Smiths together down in the Philippines who make. Uh, all of these different traditional Filipino uh, blades and uh, in traditional ways, but they have branched out from all of the many beautiful Filipino swords they do, and they uh, are making other knives from around the world, including this kukri. And look at that dramatic, look at that dramatic shape. To me, I feel like if there is any culture who can, who has the right and knowledge to make a great kukri it would be the Filipinos because all of their uh, knives have that downward angled blade and they sort of understand that sort of um, chopping dynamic of the design. So uh, this is a real beauty. It's a combination. It's made with a proprietary combination of D2 and 52100 uh, blade steel forged and uh, made with cam camagong. Um, that handle is a camagong wood, which is a very hard wood from the Philippines. And uh, you'll see all pretty much all of the handles from the traditional Filipino weapons knives are made out, out of that. I'm going to come to the main camera so you can see this to scale with me. Kind of hard for me to hold this under that knife cam, but uh, this feels really good. If you can 
you know, you can tell by looking at this that it's front heavy. It's a kukri. But the way they have it balanced, and I think the additional curve, you know, that because they're maybe because they're Filipino, instead of having uh, the handle come straight off that portion of the spine, like a uh, more traditional Nepalese kukri, they put another angle down there. So, I mean, <laughs> you're getting just serious uh, chopping action with this and slashing action. Has a very nice balance, feels good in the hand, and it's a more generous handle than on most traditional kukris. Well, at least the few that I have. Um, so I just love this knife, and I want to thank Dave again, as I have before, for this thing. It is really, really great. And I'm thinking it. This is going to take on a role. This isn't just going to be a wall hanger uh, behind me. This is going to go somewhere in the house, probably in the bedroom. It might hang on the wall because I've removed this sword from the wall uh, and put this. So this will probably end up somewhere where I can grab it in a moment's notice, say if someone uninvited is breaking into the house. And uh, this would be in the left hand because I would have something else in the right. So thank you so much. Also, uh, uh, Dave, again, also this wooden sheath wrapped in leather is pretty, pretty boss too. I like the sort of corset stitching on the front. Reminds me of my hogtooth knives uh, sub hilt uh, fighter there. All right, let's sheet this up. So, next up is a new one in my collection, newish, and that is the Cold Steel Cinquedia, the five finger wide knife. This thing, uh, people sometimes, and I don't take it too, it's, it's, you know, I don't find it to be uh, too ethnically charged, but sometimes people comment, on how it looks like a pizza slice. Isn't that cute? But yeah, it kind of does. And it's five fingers wide. And it is, it was the uh, Italian sidearm, civilian sidearm for self-defense in the 15th century. Um, dramatic wide blade creates a dramatic wide hole in the person you're dueling. Uh, they weren't allowed to carry swords anymore. So they're like, okay, we'll make do with something uh, really super wide and sharp. And uh, I'm going to put this under the knife cam. Um, I am really excited and uh, and happy with how how really well made uh, this cold steel is. And uh, lots of cold steels are, uh, but the ethnics, you know, the um, the more traditional old knives, uh, really, they have them really well made. I know they farm them out to India and China. Uh, but the people who make these knives uh, do really, really great jobs like this handle with all the little studs in it and uh, the the engraving on the pommel and on the guard. And then you also have the sheath, which has a really nice engraved um, pattern on it and leather and a chape and. Um, one of these things, <laughs> a little nubbin so you can slide it in your belt and carry it because who doesn't want to carry a Cinque Dia? Now, if we could carry around these kind of things, actually, I could legally carry that around. They might consider it a dirk and I would have to uh, correct them on that because in my state, I can't just carry a dirk. You know, who can just carry a dirk around? Um, so I might have difficulty with that. But can you imagine this just being your daily carry? Man, they did it different in the 16th century. I'll tell you that much. All right, next is one that you may have saw, uh, may have just seen under the knife cam before. Our knife cam uh, is just wide enough to show you this. So this is a 13-inch blade. This is about as big as we go on this um, in this list. To, no, this one. I'm sorry. This is 14 and a half. I was thinking I was only going 13. Uh, to me, that seems like the size where, where I'm, I start questioning, uh, is this a sword? Is this a short sword or is this a knife? Now, this parang is a machete, uh, but it's it's a, almost a quarter inch. I mean, it's a very thick machete. So to me, it's more of a knife. To me, a machete needs to be, um, needs to be thinner. It needs to be more flexible. It needs to uh, be able to handle light vegetation. This is... This is good for heavy vegetation. Um, and I dare say this is also kind of a fighting design. Um, in uh, um, Southeast, uh, in, in the South Pacific, in Southeast Asia, neither of those. I'm, I'm talking about uh, Malaysia and such. The parang is used uh, not only as 
for work, but it is also used as a weapon. Uh, you've got this nice, big, generous walnut handle. I When I first got it, I thought I was going to sand it down and make it a little more thin for me. And then I just decided maybe I needed to work on my grip strength instead. And I did that. Uh, that's that's what laziness will get you, get, get you a better grip. Um, but that, that uh, lobed pommel there, or it's not lobed, uh, that... Um, bulbous pommel there is great not only to keep this thing in your hand when you're swinging hard but i mean if you're using this as a short sword and you don't necessarily want to kill someone you could really hit someone hard with this knob i mean i i dare say you keep this in the sheath i will stop saying that by the way keep this in the sheath and you could mm, you can use that as a noggin knocker uh, as is uh, you might want to lock it in there though uh as most condors do, it comes with a great full grain leather sheath. And this one is not generic. Sometimes you'll get a condor sheath and it's like it was made for a number of different knives. This one is custom to this for sure. And my information about condor seas is probably old at this point. I haven't gotten a new condor in quite a while. Okay, next up is... Now we're going a little bit small. I have a couple of smaller knives here that are little big knives. Um, Knives that are small when you measure them, but present as much larger. And that one here is the Cortada. This is the um, Doug Markita Mar um, Cortada coming in at, let's see, eight and a quarter inches. So considerably smaller uh, than than the parang but uh because of its use case this is definitely a fighting knife and it's based off of a fighting short sword uh the ganunting so uh based on its use case and its uh heftiness its heft in hand uh, it really does feel a bit like a short sword i'm going to i'm going to bring this over to the main camera just so you can see what this looks like uh you know compared to me now yeah it it it's an eight and a half inch knife but it is definitely meant for sword type slashing and thrusting. You say sword type slashing and thrusting. Isn't that the same as knife? Well, yeah. Uh, but with this one, you you have uh, a, a much greater range. And with the downward yet straight blade, you get a lot of mileage out of that tip. Meaning it's going to work like a recurve, even though it's a straight edge uh, blade. So uh, this, to me, is a big little knife, and uh, this is probably the only one in this list that I could use in reverse grip. Maybe the maybe one of the other ones coming up here, uh, but yeah, this one, and uh, also with a great uh, high grain leather sheath now, or full gra grain leather sheath. They only made 500 of these, so this one I always feel like when I show it off, it's it's kind of. Um, bittersweet because people can't go out and buy that one but pretty much everything else here uh people can go out and buy or wait for a drop um as you'll see coming up here um this next one you saw this quite a bit when i got it this is the chieftain sax from cold steel great leather sheath traditional uh traditionally set up for mounting sideways uh, on your back i think that's how they usually carried the sax this is the chieftain sax uh, a 13 inch blade and also weighted like and balanced like a sword. It's got this nice big brass pommel that keeps the end and, and kind of heavy uh, rosewood handle keeps uh, a lot of the weight down here. Plus, it's not a quarter inch thick. It's a it's a uh, it's a pretty thin blade stock here. Uh, three sixteenths, I believe. Yeah, about three sixteenths of an inch thick. Um, so nice and light, especially for something, a blade this long, uh, keeps the tip light and lively. So you got the balance more back here, the weight more back here. That means you can get that tip uh, to where you want it to go a little bit easier than uh, something uh, that ha that is blade heavy and requires more strength to get that tip to where you need it to go. Place this under the, the knife cam here. Um, I really adore that broke back sax shape. Uh, when you look at it, you see it looks kind of like a Bowie, uh, but instead of having kind of a straight spine and then a clip dipping down and a corresponding edge dipping down, you have an edge that comes straight off the handle, uh, straight from your knuckles. And then the spine is what goes up 
to the clip. It sort of accommodates it through the spine as opposed to through the belly. Um, so that, that's just a slight, uh, that's just kind of my observation because I'll look at it like, why is this not a Bowie? And then I sort of realized, well, that's because uh, you've got that straight edge and the spine is what goes up. The spine is what arches, not arches. The spine is what reaches up towards the, the break and the clip. Uh, this is another one that I've had around the house uh, as a boy. I would grab that thing in a in a pinch because it feels so good in hand and it's thin and it's fast and it's sharp as hell. And uh, yeah, you, and it's menacing. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. This is menacing. Someone comes at you like this. This is also, by the way, reminds me of a knife that uh, used to be in an old that used to be his sidearm in the old 1980s Conan. Uh, at least some of the Conan comic books I had uh, from the early 80s kind of looked like this, and he put it in his teeth. So this is a good one for putting in your teeth. By the way, I don't recommend what I just did. It's very uncomfortable. Does not feel good. I don't see myself swimming in the water with this in my teeth. But Conan can, you know, Conan. Um, so again, nice, very nice uh, leather sheath, traditional. I recommend this one and inexpensive. I got to say, for for what it's worth, it's inexpensive. Uh, less than 120 bucks on Chicago Knife Works uh, will get you behind the wheel of a cold steel chieftain sacks. Next is from Work Tough Gear. That's why I was saying drops. I mentioned drops. That's how you get the work tough gear, or you have to be Johnny on the spot at the websites where they distribute the V44X Bowie. Uh, this thing I was waiting a long time for. It really kind of kept my eye on um, Choir Boy's cutlery. Yeah, if you know Scab, he loves the work tough gear, and he's like, I would say, their main spokesperson, or uh, he's not an official spokesperson, but they send him the knives and he puts them through the ringer and they, uh, they prove their worth every single time so i keep my eye on his channel for the for the work tough gear drops i want by the way i just missed one on friday but i wasn't ready for it didn't have the money saved up for it but would have loved that that hondo but this one uh another beautiful clip point from work tough gear uh they have the Puzan, all the Puzan Bowies and the Lanzetta and, and the Hondo. They have a lot of different Bowies, but this one to me is definitely the most dramatic and the most pertinent and interesting to me because it is a take on the famous Marine Raider Bowie, uh, that V44 shape. Um, I have this um, pattern of Bowie in a number of different iterations. I have the Western W49. I have the the um, the Bark River Knives version of it. I have the SP10 um, from, oh man, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm having all the mind blockage here, but I have the SP10. This one is by far the most dramatic. I pull it out and I'm like, Damn, it's so broad. And also they add the fuller on this one. The designer added the fuller to this one. And that uh, also evokes K-Bar. So it makes this look even more menacing to me. To me, this is a swashbuckler. It's a menacing knife. I know this is not what people are buying it for. People are not buying this for fighting or for putting on their you know, military LBE. They're, they're getting this to go camping and to, go, to do things outdoors. Uh, but it has such a combative look to it. And that is what where my tastes range. And uh, I got to say, this really this really takes care of that for me. Giant handle. It's got, a, I mean, I would even go for a smaller handle. It almost affects the visuals, which are the most important thing. Almost affects the uh, handle to blade ratio to me, but it doesn't. It doesn't almost, if it were any longer. But it really, really feels comfortable. I have swung this around in this small studio uh, many, many times without hitting anything. I mean, I did hit something in one of the videos while drawing it, but um, it handles so nicely. It is a big, beefy blade, but it handles like a lighter knife, like a like maybe because it's balanced similar to that those swords. It's a little handle heavy, um, or maybe it's. It's it's balanced like a fighting knife right up here at the choil. And so maybe that's why it moves so well. I don't know. I haven't had it that long. I have to fully uh, 
fully investigate and take it. I got to make impact on wood and stuff with it to see how it feels. I have a feeling it'll feel great. This uh, choil here is so comfortable. I know they look a little uh, like they might be harsh, uh, but all of the choils on the Work Tough Gear knives are nicely chamfered and you get a very, very comfortable uh, fit there. Everything 90 degree spine, except for right here where you'll, you're will you likely to put your thumb uh, when bearing down. So that's nice. The chamfer goes up to about there. Then you can use your ferro rod on any part of this. And not just ferro rod, a knife this big would be great for scraping um, bark off. I don't know what you're making out there in the woods, but you might need to scrape off bark and this kind of spine would be great for it. Giant, giant, uh, pan, uh, taco, uh, sorry, pancake style sheath, which I didn't like until I realized that you need the pancake sheath to fasten these D rings on. And I know that I want to carry this with the strap. So uh, D rings are okay by me. So that means the the pancake sheath has to be okay by me. But uh, what you get is a, what is this? A four and a half inch thick sheath. So it is pretty, but you're not sticking this in your waistband that you're not carrying this in an EDC fashion without getting a new sheath made for it or making it yourself. V44X Bowie, awesome sweetness from Work Tough Gear. Okay, this next one is also a smaller one, um, but it presents like, I. Like Sting, frankly, this one to me reminds me of Sting, uh, uh, Frodo, not Frodo, um, Bilbo Baggins sword from the cartoon version of The Hobbit from the 70s, a movie that I adored and watched a lot. Um, this has that feel. That's only a nine inch blade, nine and a half inch blade, uh, but it feels big in hand. And I think it's the double recurve edges the double recurve bevels and edges on this thing it looks like a sword i'm going to bring this over to the main camera so you can see how it looks uh with me so bigger than a k bar um smaller than that parang uh, but the shape of the blade has that feel of a sword it feels more of it it feels like more than just a dagger is what i'm getting at nice and broad is that blade this is the sow catcher from odin wolf and this is I believe uh, would make a great um, knife for uh, hunting pigs. I know that uh, they really go for the stabbiness in the pig hunting knives, and this one would definitely uh, make a wide hole. It's got a nice um, stiff build here with the with the uh, with the um, my God. Today, I'm having a hard time today, guys. Forgive me. With the saber ground edges and the big flat here, and then with the fuller, it's very rigid, very stiff. So it would make for an excellent penetrating knife on something that's moving around on you. I know the dogs hold them down. It sounds awful and awfully fun in, in, in the same breath. Uh, but you also have a widening handle, coffin-shaped handle that widens out, and a very generous lanyard hole. I would imagine you might want a lanyard on this uh, so that it comes out, you know, if you're doing it, using it for what it's really used for. Uh, but yeah, this D2 double-edged blade with the recurves really has the feel of a short sword and not just a dagger. All right, next up is from traditional Filipino weapons also. And this is the dagger from the Espada y Daga set, the sword and dagger set that I have. This is wearing a beautiful uh, DeMarco leather sheath. My brother made that sheath. He made a sheath for this, a sheath for its large sword brother, and then a whole belt to go with it, a fighting belt. It's so cool. Uh, but this right here is a nice sinuous thin, they call it a daga, dagger, but it's it's not a dagger as we think of it. It is a knife, a long, thin, slender knife with a swedge that would just be devastating in a fight. It's it's zero ground, so it's kind of like a it's it's kind of like having a stropped scandy edge here on this uh uh, D2 slash 52 100 blade and a very, very sharp tip. The, that swedge comes together with the main bevel to create a diamond tip. So even though this is a slashy, you know, it's a slasher, you can tell from that design, uh, the penetration of this is outstanding because of that swedge. 
so this one is generally not separated from its larger brother, um, though I do. I keep it. Uh, I keep them in two different places. The the sword is over there, and I keep this knife, oftentimes on the desk here or on top of one of my knife cases, because this is one of those ones I keep by my side when I'm watching a movie at night with my wife. This is one that I frequently have out there, just because if I needed to, to grab a knife quickly for something, this would do anything I would need it to do. And at nighttime, I'm only thinking about nighttime issues. And um, yet I might be better off with something smaller. I, I also have that on me. Uh, but something like this with this handle, this Camagong handle, but that's that uh, Filipino hardwood with the uh, choil there and this horse hoof pommel back here. It's it's really meant for chopping. It, it has that palm extension for chopping and slashing. But if you needed to thrust this with that guard, this thing is just an all-arounder. I love it. It's got a classic design, and I love the, uh, the rattan wrap there. It actually makes it very comfortable over the pin that secures that blade in the handle. So if you do get this, uh, they, they have this and a different uh, Espada Idaga set. They go quickly. At traditional Filipino weapons. If you get it, you will not have a leather sheath. You'll have a monoblock sheath that contains both the long and the short. Uh, that's also kind of a traditional Filipino thing for just kind of keeping them, um, for not carrying them, but for just keeping them where you hang them or whatever. All right. Second to last one here, if I can get through it with my talking, is the Zvord von Temsky Bowie. This thing is... This reminds me of a small version of the, the Grosse Messer, the big knife that Germans uh, for years and years of, uh, throughout history, uh, Middle Ages and Renaissance had in their, they call them hearth knives, just big, big knives slash swords. And Cold Steel makes one and it would be used for everything from, um, from, uh, what do you call it, sort of farmland land tasks to protecting home and hearth. This reminds me of that, uh, even though it is a 11-inch uh, blade. It reminds me of that because it's so hefty. It's a quarter-inch thick forged blade with a saber apple seed grind. So this thing comes down to a convex edge. It's really sharp, but kind of deceptively sharp it feels like it might not be so much and then you take it to paper or you take it to wood and it's it's going to town that's something that i find with uh, convex edges that you run into um, sometimes they don't feel as sharp as they actually are you have that giant s guard which is big on both dimensions it'll protect your hands uh, somewhat on the sides as well as up front and on the back that also reminds me of that great uh, the grossa messer the big knife uh, but also this this very neutral, I'll call it coffin shaped, I guess, or it's just super neutral. Uh, to me, I can fit a hand and a half on there. Uh, you might have big hands. You might get a hand and a quarter. <laughs> uh, but big handle. I've never actually used it where I've held it with two. But I, I could see you doing that for uh, just for controlling this giant beast of, of a blade. Also, the weight of it, it gives it a, a sword-like feel because of how it just feels like a bigger knife in hand. If I were to hold this, I might feel like that edge is kind of out or that tip is out here somewhere because there's no weight relief. There's no fuller. This is just a solid slab of steel except where they've convex ground off that edge. Beautiful leather sheath, by the way. Full grain is the word I've been going for. Full grain leather sheath with the Sword logo on it which looks kind of like the Seek logo or symbol, I should say. That's not a logo. Okay, last up here is the um, special Marine, the special Filipino Marine-made bolo that my dad got me in the Philippines uh, some years back now. Um, really nice traditional wooden sheath, all carved, and you know that's how they do it. They do the wood and very occasionally wrap it with something more Usually it's just like a, uh, well, here it's this string, but usually it's uh, like rattan or something. But this has a 13-inch blade. and oh Wait, 13 or 14? Sorry, guys. Let's see. Yep, 13 and a half right in the middle. 
13 and a half inch blade made from a leaf spring. Uh, very kind of rough. This is a buffalo, water buffalo horn, and you can see that the, the tang doesn't quite come to the end of the handle. Like there is some roughness to this. This is not what we would expect when we buy a knife in the mail, but man alive, does this thing move? This thing moves really, really nicely, and it's incredibly sharp. This is like, this is made for and by a Filipino special marine. I know they oftentimes carry uh, ganuntings, and uh, but this is a personal carry, and you could see this being used in a very sword-like fashion. Uh, 13 and a half inches, is it a short sword? Is it a knife? Kind of hard to tell. This one feels like a short sword, maybe even more than any of them uh, because of how it how it handles and how uh, that blade is shaped. I love Filipino bolos. I love that downward angle, even on this one, which is relatively uh, straight. You, you can see a long clip um, and you can see a whole bunch of grinder chatter on this blade. This was not made for a collector. This was made for a user. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for stumbling down this road with me um, of is it a knife or is it a short sword? Uh, I'm always kind of teetering between the two, and I found that around 13 inches, I'm not sure if I can tell the difference. Can you? Let me know down below. What is your favorite near sword or very, very big blade? Um, you know, I come in and out of uh, my collection uh, 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 proclivities. And right now I'm just digging these big fixed blades. So that'll never go away. It's just seasonal. All right. Be sure to join us on Wednesday. Uh, I mean, on Thursday for uh, Thursday night knives. That's tomorrow night. If you're watching this, the day this drops and then on Sunday for another great interview with another interesting knife individual. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher. I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.